here's a question for you. Do sexy advertisements tempt you to assault or rape women? No, I didn't think so. But lawmakers in Germany, they apparently think so. Or at least that's what they think these ads are tempting the million-plus Muslim migrants flooding their shores to do. And now, to keep women safe, after over a thousand women were sexually assaulted in Cologne attacks on New Year's Eve, Germany's justice minister wants to ban sexy ads. So I guess now ads like this one here would be illegal, totally illegal in Germany if they get their way. But come on, is this actually going to do anything at all to keep women safe? No. And isn't this a dangerous, dangerous step in the wrong direction? I mean, is Germany going to become like Saudi Arabia and cover women up? Joining me right now, Dr. Zudi Jasser, the president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Dr. Jasser, good to have you back. Um, Thank this you. lawmaker in Germany wants to create what he calls gender neutral ads. And, you know, that way nobody would actually feel like they want to go out and rape a woman. Come on. Uh, you know, what's your response to that? Trish, it is, it just amazes me how low to the depths of, of weakness and appeasement and, and actually as a Muslim, it's sort of this bigotry of low expectations that somehow we have this moral relativism where we, we sacrifice the freedom of, of individual rights all in the name of preventing these, these militant Islamists from acting and when in fact they're becoming vicarious Islamic theocracies like Saudi Arabia or Iran, where by the way, women's rights, uh, uh, where they can't wear what they want, they're hit with sticks, they're raped with no rights. They have no bodily autonomy. So to say that somehow letting our own values slide and, and change what we perceive to be moral relativism rather than moral confrontation is what we should do is actually going to demean women and I think is bigoted towards Muslims, actually, that somehow we can't adapt you. ourselves. I would absolutely agree with you. Um, but nonetheless, this is something that the left in Germany is pushing. You know, also keep in mind, Dr. Jasser, it was the left and, and members of this administration in Germany that were trying to hush up all of those cologne attacks it's as though they want to wear these blinders and they're blaming themselves and they're blaming women instead of actually looking in the mirror and saying, we're the ones who invited all these people here and we're the ones who forgot that they are not culturally similar to us. It's the same cancer where it's a narcissism that everything is about us. It's not about them being in the 13th century and being medieval and being theocrats. No, it's somehow about us. No different than the Benghazi video was blamed for what caused Benghazi when in fact it was militants. It wasn't about the video. They want to blame speech. They want to blame expression in the West versus actually dealing with the true clash of ideologies between the West freedom and Islamism in Iran and Saudi Arabia and that these militants are bringing with them. We have to confront the ideology or else their nation within a nation of the Islamist movement will continue to threaten us. I know that that has been very much on your agenda. You have been working aggressively to try and have people in your community confront this ideology that in many ways you say is flawed and you have pushed aggressively for reform. I want to talk about the response you're getting to that in just a minute. But first, Dr. Jasser, um, there was a very disturbing study out this week, a survey that came out of the UK showing that two thirds, two thirds of British Muslims who live in Muslim neighborhoods there in the UK said that they would not give the government any information if they knew any details about a terror plot. I mean, my gosh. I, what are we really dealing with if, if we can't count on members of the Muslim community to help us in this fight? Well, I think we need to learn from this and, and realize this is why we have a whack-a-mole program in counterterrorism. It's because, yes, there's the one-third that would report, but the two-thirds that are sort of this uh, uh, living in the West, they, they look upon it as the land of war. They, they see the land of Islam as being Muslim-majority countries. They see themselves as visitors, not as embracing the ideology of freedom and liberty of Britain, of Germany, and of America. We have less of a problem in America, but yet these numbers should show us 
that it is a deep problem where we're not addressing the ideology. Now, the numbers you reported are a bit skewed because they looked at neighborhoods where it was 20% Muslim. But having said that, there's some hope also in those numbers. 70 to 80% said they were keen on assimilating. 70 to 80% in those numbers said that they loved being in Britain, but yet they hadn't breached the bridge of adopting I mean, the ideology attack. of Western freedom. And if they knew of a terror attack, then they wouldn't come forward with more information. That seems like you're identifying more with ISIS than you are with your own country and protecting your countrymen. And this is why the UK now is, and, and the Prime Minister is saying, you know, listen, our prevent program is failing because we're only looking at that last few weeks when they get radicalized militantly. The years before where they hate the values of the West, where they look at conspiracy theories and tell Muslims like in our Muslim reform movement. And by the way, the Quilliam Foundation in Britain has been great and they are in our Muslim reform movement. So yes, there are Muslims mm -hmm. trying to get a voice, but the majority right now are dominated by a mafia that says that the West is evil and this is what these studies are teaching us and by by gosh we better listen and look at those numbers and Dr. fix Jasper, them quickly. I just have 20 seconds but what is the response you're getting as you go out and you canvass and you say I need support from the Muslim community we need to reform this religion so we take the best parts and we get rid of the stuff that would create all of this controversy what do you hear in response the majority are with us they say that they pat me on the back and say keep working the other side the leadership are toxic. They believe that Islamism is not a problem. They want to be in denial. So we need to confront them openly, not just behind the scenes. Well, good for you for doing so. Thank you so much, Dr. Zudi Jasper.